Good morning, everybody. It's time for your next installment of Number Corner. We are going to update that May calendar. To do that, you're going to need your May calendar document. It looks something like this. You might have printed it out. You might have a digital copy. I don't care which one you do, as long as you do one of them. Up to this point, you should have spent this week already looking at the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th, because I showed you those cards. You should already have entries here. Let's see if your entries are similar to mine. They might be different. Just because they're different doesn't mean they're wrong. But if they're wrong, they need to be corrected. Let's look at them. All right, we have the full breadth of our May calendar right here. We're going to start off today by looking at the 12th. The 12th is an irregular shaped polygon. We've already calculated the area of this shape by partitioning it into smaller parts. Let's take a real quick moment to look at how we do that. To calculate the area of this irregular polygon, I'm going to split it up into three separate squares. A square that is four by four, there are 16 squares here. A square that's two by two, there's four squares there. And another square that's two by two, there's four squares there. We got one square that's two by two, we get another square that's two by two, and we get another square that's four by four. The total is 24 square units. I took the time because we've already seen these cards to put that same equation on the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th. We haven't flipped the 15th yet. So we're not going to enter anything there. It might be a different shape. We don't know. We haven't looked at it yet. But I do know that because I'm on a digital copy, I can quickly and easily hit copy and paste and populate these boxes. If you're not using a digital copy, again, that's okay. It is a written copy, but you're going to have to handwrite these equations out. We're going to now look at the area of the shaded region. All right, the shaded region for this one is this portion right here. It's the thing that is green. We have the length and width of this one. The length is 3. The width is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. There are 6 squares here. All right, the color was green, and we have the fraction of 6 out of 24. There were 6 shaded squares, 24 squares altogether. When we look at this, we are going to look at equivalent fractions. We're going to find an equivalent fraction by simplifying 6 24ths. What is a common factor? for 6 and 24. Remember, a factor is any number you can multiply to get to that number. So what can you multiply to get to 6? Well, you can multiply 2. 2 times 3 makes 6. You can multiply 3. 3 times 2 makes 6. You can multiply 6. 6 times 1 makes 6. The factors of 6 are 1, 6, 2, and 3. We need the largest common factor, and we can simplify this in one shot. Common factor for 6 and 24. Now we know the factors for 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Factors for 24, on the other hand, are going to be 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 12, and 24. What's the highest common factor between 6 and 24? If you said 6, you're right. What is 6 divided by 6? Well, it's 1. What is 24 divided by 6? Well, it's 4. 6 24 is equivalent to 1 fourth, and we know this because we divided 6 and 24 by the same common factor. We divided 6 by 6 and 24 by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 24 divided by 6 is 4. Factors. Simplification of fractions. Hey, let's look at the 13th. The total shape is the same, so we're not going to bother with that portion. We've already cut and pasted it right on there, but we get some crazy shading happening here. Now, we've got one square right here at the top. We're going to partition this one. We're also going to partition this one down here. Now, we could partition it like this, or we could partition it across. We've already partitioned it across. We might as well be consistent. Cons consistency is important. So for this one, we have one shape that is a two by three. We've got another one that is a 2 by 4, and this bottom one is a 2 by 2. Let's label those. All right, we've got 2 by 3, 4 by 2, 2 by 2. Those are our three equations. 2 times 3, 4 times 2, 2 times 2. We've got our three partitioned portions. One part that was 4 by 2, one part that was 2 by 2, and one part that was 3 by 2. 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 8 makes 18. That is 18 square units. Let's go count it and double check. With these, because it's on a grid, you can easily count the boxes to double check your answers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I counted 18. We calculated 18. 
We must be right. All right, here we've got, it was the color purple, not the movie, but the actual color purple. And then here we've got the fraction 18 out of 24. There are 18 shaded. There's 24 boxes altogether. We need an equivalent fraction for that one. Again, we're gonna look at factors. What is the highest common factor? 18 and 24. Well, the factors of 18 are going to be 1. 1 is a factor of every number. 2, because 18 is an even number. 18 evenly divides into 2. We've also got 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Now for 24, our highest common factor for 24 and 18 24 is good common factors of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. What's the highest common factor there? If you said 6, you're right. 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. 18 24ths is equivalent to 3 fourths. Now you could have divided this by a lot of different numbers. You would have had an equivalent fraction as long as it divides both 18 and 24th evenly. What I'm doing when I do this, I'm simplifying to its lowest forms. You can't make 3 fourths any smaller than 3 fourths. 3 and 4 do not have a common factor other than 1. That is a simplified fraction. That's an extra thing. I'm not even supposed to teach you that. We do it anyways. Hey, let's look at the 14th. On the 14th, we have a shape that is one, two, three, and four on that side, and then one, two on that side. It's a two by four shape. All right, we have got a two by four shape. There is eight parts shaded. There is green, because it was green. And here we get 18 out of 24. That's our original fraction. Let's go ahead and simplify that fraction. Let's divide it. What is the highest common factor between 18? Wait, nope, eight. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. What's the highest common factor between eight and 24? Well, Eight's an even number, 24 is an even number, so it's definitely two, but you can do better than that. What are the factors for eight? Well, the factors for eight are one, two, four, and eight. Factors for 24, one, two, four, six, 12, eight, and 24. Eight is a common factor for both eight and 24. Let's divide it by that. Eight divided by one is one, and 24 divided by eight is three. Hey, look, we made a unit fraction. 8 24ths is equivalent to 1 third. We simplified that fraction. Let's check out the next few days. We are going to flip some cards right here, folks. We're going to flip the 15th. Ooh, it's purple. We're going to flip the 16th. Ooh, it's orange. We're going to flip the 17th. Oh my goodness, it's an entirely different shape. And then we're going to flip the 18th. Hey, look, it's that entirely different shape, and now it's green. Those are your new cards to flip. On Monday, May 18th, we're going to return, and we're going to update our calendar for those. What I'd like you to do is take some time and update your calendar without me. When we check up on Monday, we'll see how you did. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's your number corner calendar update for today, May 14th. You have yourselves a wonderful day, a great weekend, and I'll talk to you again soon.